Okay, hello, hello. This is the next Dreamland tutorial. The subject of this tutorial is how to do audio mastering in Traktor Pro. Believe me, you can use it in audio mastering, at least in home setting. Have you ever thought how could you get a signal from DAW to DJ software to test your tune in a DJ mixing situation? Or did you ever have a situation that after exporting your tune and playing it in a DJ software, it sounded too different or wrongly balanced with the other tunes in your DJ set? I've had such situations and finally figured out how to root DAW into Traktor Pro. First of all, this is not a replacement for professional audio mastering. I would always recommend you to use professional audio mastering service when your tune is ready for release and distribution. This method is more suitable for so-called home mastering situations, where you have to do mastering by yourself and you don't have the skills or motivation to use more complicated tools. During life cycle of a tune, it is common to make intermediate versions or drafts to get feedback from friends, dance floors or different sound systems. In my opinion, it is unrealistic to think that an indie artist could afford to send every draft to professional mastering. So that is why you sometimes have to do home mastering. The most challenging part is routing your signal from DAW to DJ software without any DAC conversions or audio quality degradation. In Windows you can do this if you have an audio interface with loopback functionality or perhaps with an audio interface that has SPDIF input and output. Loopback audio interfaces are a relatively new and rare phenomenon. But, for example, some third-generation Foxrite Scarlett audio interfaces have loopback and maybe also some RME models. On SPDIF interface, you would have to create a loop by connecting SPDIF output to the SPDIF input by a cable and choosing SPDIF as a clock source. Unfortunately, SPDIF loop does not work well with all audio interfaces and you just have to test if it works. In Macs, there might be other ways to create the loop, but unfortunately, I don't have a lot of Mac experience. So, the first part is that you have to figure out how to route your signal from DAW to Raptor Pro. Each audio interface model has different routing capabilities, so I recommend getting familiar with the manual of your audio interface. The way I've done this recently is one, that I send master out of Ableton Live to playback channels 3 and 4 and mute auxiliary speakers as they are also connected there. Number 2. Inside Scarlet Mixer I connect playback 3 and 4 output to loopback 1 and 2. Number 3. In Traktor Pro Preferences Input Routing I connect loopback output 1 and 2 to a Traktor deck by choosing loopback 1 and 2 from input dig B drop down menu. While doing this video I needed the loopback for OBS Studio video recording software. So I have to use SPD loop for this demonstration and routing is a little bit different than I just explained. Okay, so I will show the routing. So here is Ableton Live project. Normally in this project it would be full of tracks, but because I have CPU issues with the video recording software, I have only one track, which is unmastered version of Unstable Reality, but in normal situation it would be a full project. Anyway, uh, here in Ableton Live, once again, master out. So normally I have studio monitors 1 and 2. So I would choose 3 and 4, uh, which are normally aux speakers. For the loopback I would choose 3 and 4, but now I'm choosing 5 and 6 because I'm using SPDIF. And then I would need to open the mixer. And here I would have to check that loopback has as input playback 3 and 4. But now I don't have it. No, I just have to check that SPDIF. Here I have routed playback 5 and 6 to SPDIF outputs. And yeah, yeah, one more thing, of course. Here is clock source as SPDIF. Normally it is internal, but now it is SPDIF. Otherwise, I don't think it will work. Then I have to go to Tractor Pro here and open preferences and here you know input routing so here in input deck b you see that i have spdif 1 and 2 as inputs one more thing 
Normally, of course, you have both tracks here, as you see, but if you need to use the input, you have to choose here. There is a drop down menu. Here, there is alternatives, track the grimace, blah, 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 blah. You choose live input here, live input. So now the signal should come there. Okay, so once again, back to Ableton Live. Here I have a sample mastering chain, compressor, equalizer, and limiter. Now limiter and compressor are disabled and they're kind of outside the scope of this tutorial. It's more about spectral balancing. You don't necessarily have to use compressor on master for just a simple home master. And now as I'm concentrating on spectral balance, so limiter is also disabled. Okay, so then in Ableton I will find once again some busy portion in my track. I've already found it here and put a loop. And then in Tractor I will have a reference track that I want to use in mastering. I've already chosen it. It's Killer Watts Fractals is this time a reference track. But of course I would repeat this process with multiple tracks and check how the spectral balance would compare with different tracks. But now it's already chosen. And by the way, I chose a track which has the same bass line key as my track, so Fractals has the same bass line key. I do it also with the track with different bass line key, but with the same bass line key it's just easier. And another thing, the reference tracks. Best to have approximately the same BPM. On this demo I have exactly the same BPM, so it makes the working a little bit easier, I think. Okay, so now I will start the process. So first, in Ableton Live, I will press play. And you see that I have signal here. You see, now coming to Tractor. And then, look what I'm doing. Okay, so then I will... Okay, so then I will just concentrate on the low end because the master track is much louder so I have to make it quieter to try to match the loudness. This is not like scientific way to match loudness but this is just what I'm doing. It's a home master. Yeah. So first I will kill highs, highs and mids on both tracks and compare. It's much louder as you hear, so I will reduce the volume. here that I have less highs so I'll try to do some modifications first I do this this is something that's not really audible I just do it always I know that I have too much low mid so I typically cut them a little bit but then this is what I concentrate on
Okay, so you will kind of already, hopefully, understand what I'm doing. So I'm just using Tractor Pro as another tool in mastering. Now I have to boost about 2.6 dBs of highs to make them sound equally loud for me. I would probably not boost that much. I'd try to keep at max 2 dBs just because I'm not sure. So I would modify the tune a little bit, but not necessarily as much as you could feel just by... I, I, I would try to make the modifications conservative. Okay, so after you have decided on your track EQ settings, Tractor Pro is just one tool for EQing, so don't use only it, but it's one more tool for you to use. But after you have decided which EQ settings you are using for your next export, you can then close Tractor and concentrate on your limiter. I use a lot of L2, but it's outside the scope of this tutorial. Just keep in mind that your home master will most likely be less loud than professionally mastered tunes that you would mix in a DJ set, so you will have to set the gain on DJ mixer louder than on professional track. If you have to do very drastic changes to spectral balance in your master EQ, then it might be better to do them in the mix. I would try to avoid anything more than plus minus 2 dB cuts or boosts when doing mastering on this way. Okay, so that's about mastering with Tractor Pro. If you like this tutorial, please share, like, press the like button and follow and support in the links in the description below. Thank you very much.